A principle reads that practicing meditation can increase learning and retention for students who have experienced trauma. She decides to test the truth of this by conducting an experiment at her school. A group of 60 10th grade students are all given the same academic schedule with identical math, science, English, and history classes. The only difference in their schedules is first period. 30 of the students are given a meditation class for first period. The remaining group has a free study hall period. At the end of the semester, the principal collects the scores from the academic classes of all the students, then compares their grades. She finds that the group who meditated did 5.3% better on homework and 10.1% better on quizzes, but did not score significantly higher on exams. The meditators scored 2.1% lower on projects. So uh, let's take a look at number eight. What should the principal conclude? So remember, I want you to remember that you cannot say the principal concludes she was right. We have three possible conclusions. We talked about two of them. Sorry, I didn't mention the third one, but either the data supports the hypothesis, it kind of looks like I'm right, the data refutes the hypothesis, or it could be inconclusive, like we don't have enough to tell. Then what should the principal conclude? So if we're talking about the data, we better go look at the data, you guys. So where's the data in this reading? Anybody see any data? It's at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. the exactly. We find that the group who meditated did 5.3% better on homework, 10.1% better on quizzes, uh, did not so score significantly higher on exams, but they actually scored a bit lower on projects. So there's our data. So what do you think the principal should conclude? Does the data support her hypothesis? Does the data refute her hypothesis? Or is there not enough to tell? There's not enough to tell. Why do you say that? Support your opinion for me. Because they sky scored higher in some, but on the other two, they did not. Uh, one's not higher than the other. She's noticing they scored better on homework and quizzes, but then this one wasn't really a big difference, and then this one was actually a bit lower. So uh, Sarah's saying, little inconclusive. Um, do you guys agree with Sarah? What do you think? I've actually accepted two right answers for this in the past, as long as I have the evidence. So that's why I'm asking. I'm not trying to prove Sarah wrong or something. No. I like Sarah's answer. But I have had students argue for me that they thought that the data supports the hypothesis as well. And what they pointed out was that where they did better on homework and quizzes was significantly higher, was a lot bigger of a difference. Um, and so if you said the data supports, as long as you were able to, port, to point to that, I would have been okay with that answer as well. Like this is a lot higher in two areas. So that being said though, if this were on the GED, then they would ask you based on her conclusion, what should the principal's next step be? And whether you decided like Sarah, that the data is inconclusive, or you said it seems to kind of support it, I would still say that the next step should be the same thing. I would definitely before retesting refine my hypothesis and retest, especially with this inconclusive data that you've pointed out, Sarah. Maybe I might say then that students with the meditation class do better on homework and quizzes, because that's something I could pinpoint. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? So maybe they don't do better on projects because they don't have that independent study hall time to work on it. Or I could say that they're gonna do better um, overall in their final grade then I'm just comparing final grades. And so if I refine my hypothesis then and retest, then I could have a stronger idea of what's going on.